I showed some of them in the presentation, some I didn't have time to either look equivalent or actually favor the new formulation of tenofovir. So, for example, there's less albumin seen in the urine. There's less protein, uh, retinol binding protein, which has been suggested as a good marker for tubular uh, dysfunction. So, and everything that's been looked at to date, and we're talking about, you know, it's a phase two study, so it's not as small as the study Matt presented on the NNRTI. We're talking about a you know, about 150 patients altogether, uh, that uh, those markers actually favored the, the, uh, the new formulation. What I would say is we should still be cautious. We need to follow up these early results with the phase three study where 800 patients uh, will be involved in it. And so we'll have many more patients to look at it. So I, I think actually from my point of view, they've done a pretty good job. The renal markers that do stand out, I mean the standard things that we look at as clinicians taking care of patients is that serum creatinine rises were smaller. The estimated GFR based on that was uh, less impacted by the new formulation. So I think on balance what you would, should take away from the presentation is that it appeared to be safer uh, to the kidney. And that is supported by the pharmacology. We know that by using this particular dosage in this formulation, the kidneys are seeing about 90% less tenofovir than they are in the currently available formulation. So if there is tenofovir toxicity and you're using a 10% dose, you might anticipate that the uh, overall renal uh, safety profile should be better. And that's what it seems to be emerging from this phase two study.